Hello and welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoy this video, get some value out of it, and maybe like and subscribe, maybe share this video with some friends too, especially if you're just getting started on your DeFi, decentralized finance, and crypto journey. So today we are going to talk about the future of digital and social currency. This is a video for people just getting started. I know what it feels like. There's so much to learn. It's so overwhelming. This is going to give you a nice base. It's a short, concise video here. So I think you're gonna get a lot of value out of this, especially if you're just getting started uh, with cryptocurrency and you wanna know the basics. So uh, again, if it's your first time here, welcome. Uh, let's jump right into it. So let's start with decentralized finance. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over three different definitions here, DeFi, blockchain, and cryptocurrency. These are the three basics. This is gonna give you a nice base and a nice start. All right, so DeFi, you'll hear it called that quite a bit, or decentralized finance, uh, is a blockchain-based, and we're gonna get into what blockchain is, don't worry, form of finance that does not rely on centralized financial intermediaries or banks, right, brokerages, exchanges, to offer traditional financial instruments, and instead, they utilize what's called a smart contract on blockchains, the most common being Ethereum. So Ethereum, which we'll also get into later in the video, is one of the largest cryptocurrencies by market capitalization or market cap. Now let's go back to smart contracts, right? Because that's what decentralized finance utilizes here. So they utilize smart contracts. Well, what are these smart contracts? Think of smart contracts as just peer-to-peer -peer transactions, right? Transactions from person to person where you don't have to go to a, through a middle person like a bank, right? So in the, in the case that we're in right now, in the situation we're in, if I were to send money across the pond into a different country from the United States, I would have to go through what? An intermediary, a bank. Uh, with DeFi, you don't have to. You can go person to person, which can be really, really useful, right? Especially if that person across the world needs that money very soon. Right, so that's where decentralized finance really comes into play. Now, Mark Cuban, obviously billionaire Mark Cuban, a um, serial investor, right, a super successful person. He believes that this is the future of investing and the future of finance. Uh, so it is, it is kind of good to think about, uh, you know, how others in the world see decentralized finance. And when I say others, especially people like Mark Cuban, right, people who have help shape our world that we're living in today. So that is DeFi. Now let's move on to blockchain. Blockchain is a shared database across multiple computers that records information in what are called blocks. Hence, how it got its name, blockchain. Now there's also a public blockchain and a private blockchain. Now the public blockchain is completely open, completely decentralized, right? There's no one party that controls it. It's just peer to peer, which is done through you got it, smart contracts. Now, Bitcoin is one of the largest public blockchains. Uh, blockchains. You've probably heard of it, right? It's also the largest um, cryptocurrency by market capitalization. Now, private blockchains are an invite-only type of blockchain where it must be validated by the network starter or some kind of guidelines and rules set up by the network. JP Morgan's interbank information system runs on a private blockchain. Okay, so you've got public blockchain and private blockchain. All right, so now that you know what DeFi is, decentralized finance, and you know what blockchain is, let's hop into cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency, or for short crypto, you've probably heard it both ways. It's a digital currency where transactions are verified and records are maintained by a decentralized system. So again, it's a digital currency. There's no physical currency, but it's run on the blockchain. And it's this digital asset, right? And it's, it's done through using cryptography opposed to maintained by a centralized authority. Again, it's decentralized, right? It's peer to peer. It's a person to person transaction run through smart contracts. All right, so now you have a pretty good background on DeFi. You have a pretty good understanding of the blockchain. You know what cryptocurrency is. Let's take a look at the top two highest market cap or market capitalization cryptocurrencies that we have right now. So on the left there in that picture, you'll see Ethereum. On the right, you'll see Bitcoin. Now, there's a lot of different competing theories as to what the future outlook is for both of these assets. However, 
uh, one that I really like and one that I share, and again, it's just an opinion. A lot of people are trying to figure out how this is all going to play out in the future. But a lot of people would say Bitcoin, you could kind of look at it as digital gold, right? It's a stored asset. There was a time where a lot of people invested in gold to have that stored value, right? Think of Bitcoin as that. Think of Ethereum as more transactional, more perhaps the internet of money in the future. We spend all of our money, almost all of our money now, uh, online, right? So it seems. Think of Ethereum as the avenue that will help us do that uh, for the long term and into the future. So these are the two highest market cap cryptocurrencies on the market right now, okay? Now, this last tidbit is not meant to confuse you, but I just want to give you another golden nugget, something to think about because it's very, very new in the crypto space, and I challenge you to go do some more research on this and do some digging of your own and find out more information. They're called NFTs. You might have heard of them. You might have heard people talking about NFTs, these non-fungible tokens. What the heck is an NFT? Well, as it says right here, stands for non-fungible tokens, an electric token, uh, electronic token rather, representing something unique. Say it's a digital piece of art or a website domain name. These tokens in turn use cryptocurrencies like Ethereum or Cardano to run and validate them. So think about that favorite painting that your aunt has in her house, right? She had to purchase that. Well, what if there was a market for a digital piece of that artwork? And in fact, there probably is. That is what NFTs are. And we are just getting started with NFTs. There is still a ton, and I mean a ton, to learn about them. And we just don't know yet how it's going to fit into our world. However, we've got a wide variety of different NFTs selling for millions, millions, and millions of dollars. So it is important that we understand a little bit about what they are and that we can stay up to date on how they're going to be utilized in this entire space in the future. So one that's uh, really interesting to me is called Decentraland. Now this is actually an asset that you can also purchase. Uh, it's a cryptocurrency, but this idea is the virtual reality space where you can buy virtual real estate, right? Instead of the house of your dreams in real life, you can have the house of your dreams online, right? So I know it's kind of crazy to think about, but you got to think a little bit outside the box when you're talking about NFTs and virtual reality. And again, I just wanted to throw this golden nugget in there at the end of this. And uh, I hope you got some value out of this video. We're almost finished up. All right, so here are some resources to get you started. And again, if you're getting some value, make sure you like and subscribe. would appreciate that, especially if you're new to the channel. Uh, I hope you stay and come back for more videos in the future. But I'm going to give you three resources here to get you started. Number one is Coin Market Cap. This is going to list assets that can be purchased from various DEXs or decentralized exchanges. Another one of these websites is CoinGecko.com. I give you two of these because most of the time, if it's not on Coin Market Cap, you can find that asset over on CoinGecko. And if it's not on CoinGecko, well, you could probably find it over on Coin Market Cap. So you'll see in a lot of my videos, I have both of these websites open, especially when I'm taking Q&A on various assets. And here's the thing. At, at the current time of this recording, there's over 10,500 cryptocurrencies. They're not all going to be here by next year. They're not all going to be here by next month. So it's important that you stay on top of the ever-changing world of decentralized finance, the blockchain, and cryptocurrencies. And this will give you a cryptocurrency timeline. And I'm actually going to pull this up right here for you. Uh, and we'll just drop this down. And here is CoinMarketCap that I was mentioning before, CoinGecko. Okay, so these two websites here will give you lists. Here's Bitcoin and Ethereum. I mentioned those were right at the top, right? Top two. Uh, and there's many of them on this list, right? 10,595 to be exact. Now, this third resource here is the cryptocurrency timeline. And I give you this website here. Make sure you just screenshot this. You're going to want to go back to this at some point. And if you'll scroll down here, you'll see that they give you a running timeline on when everything started, where we're at, where we're going. And I think it's just a really nice place to start. And again, if you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and uh, hit the subscribe button if you want more videos like this and more information about cryptocurrency. One last thing before I let you go, you're not too late. You could still get started in crypto today. And I hope you enjoy the video and I will see you.
in the next one.